Hi, my name is Marcos Bessa, and I'm a creative lead on LEGO Harry Potter. Today I'm going to be talking about the LEGO Harry Potter Diagon Alley, and it's a massive street with a lot of uh, different buildings inspired by the movies of Harry Potter. So we start at Ollivander's, which is the shop where Harry gets his first wand, and he gets to meet Ollivander, the wand maker. That building is sharing the base plate with Scribulus, a shop where kids can buy parchment paper, quills and ink and those kind of things. In the second block, we actually have Quality Quidditch Supplies, which is a shop where we see a bunch of kids standing in front of the window admiring the Nimbus 2000, this magical broom that just came out. So it's one of those key moments that we see in the first movie. We have entrance to the Daily Prophet. It's a location that we don't necessarily see in the movies, but we know it is part of that street. We have Flourish and Blots, which is the bookstore, and we see a very prominent scene taking place in that shop later in movie two, where Harry Potter meets Gilderoy Lockhart, one of the teachers of Hogwarts. We also have Florian Fortescue Ice Cream Shop, which again is one of those more obscure references that we see very briefly Florian coming out of the shop with ice creams in his hand uh, in the first movie. So finally in the fourth module we have Weasley's Wizard Wheezes, which is the shop of the twins and it's a shop that is actually established much later compared to movie one and two. It's so iconic of this street and it's so important and colorful that we thought it would be a shame not to include it in this model. We really had to cherry pick hard to find the, the perfect lineup for the model and capture the specific scenes that actually happen on the location. What we ended up with is Hagrid, who introduces Harry to the Diagon Alley in the first movie. Of course, Harry and Hermione. We did Ron uh, and the rest of the Weasley family, Molly, Ginny, Fred and George, as well as Gilderoy Lockhart, Lucius Malfoy and Draco and of course only Vander. We were very happy that we managed to build in some of the less known characters like Florian Fortescue and also photographer who takes a photo of Harry and Gilderoy Lockhart the first time they meet. So the, the challenge was because they appear only for a split second in a movie, I really had to go through the shots and watch carefully what is it that they're actually wearing because it's not really featured anywhere, but we are very happy with the result. This model is uh, over a meter long, four base plates of 16 times 32 next to each other. It has over 5,000 bricks. It's the perfect marriage between this beautiful display piece, but it's also a beautiful, rich playset that can invite anybody to relive all these iconic moments from the movies and even more. So on the inside of the model, there's so much to discover. In the Ollivander shop, we know that there's lots of shelves with one boxes and some of them are just decorative, but there's a few here and there that you can actually pick up yourself and open it up and find a little wand inside. In the Quality Quidditch Supplies, because it is a shop that is referencing so much the Hogwarts Quidditch teams, we do have a builds that references the colors of the houses as if they were uniforms just piled up like you see usually in a clothes store. Inside Flourish and Blots, there's also a couple of actual minifigure books including two little copies of Magical Me by Gilderoy Lockhart. And finally in the Weasley shop, Georgie the graphic designer had a blast creating a bunch of different colorful items. It was actually a quest for myself to go through the shop and learn what's in there because what you get in a movie is a bunch of content, bunch of colors. And I think one of my personal favorites is Fred's basic blaze boss, which is essentially a magical fireworks, as well as Dancing Doxy, which if you're a dog owner could be fun because it's marketed as it drives cats crazy. There's two floors besides the ground floor, so it's the tallest of all the buildings. And we really try to capture this verticality that we see in the shop once we enter it for the first time in the movies. And you see how tall it is with all the different balconies and staircases. You see this statuesque, very skinny, tall guy that is just outside of the shop, like lifting his hat as he greets the, the guests. As you do that movement on the lever, the hand and the hat go up and down. You are activating something, but it's not exactly the thing that you're seeing that is moving. And it creates this illusion of a, of a magical moment. One of the late nights in work, we were just sitting down and looking at, at the model and discussing the details and the stuff that we want to build in. And we were already very late in the process when we decided to scale it all down and actually increase the amount of details and add three brand new shops than initially planned. The, the challenge and the fun exercise was how much detail we go, how big we go, how small, and in the end, achieving this 
meter long street with so many different shops really lives up to the idea of a street. It brought memories of when I was a kid, you know, wanting to shrink myself to the size of a minifigure and really walk down my models. And this one is definitely those that I wish I could become a minifigure and just walk inside of it and lose myself in it. I'll be in love with this model for, for many years to come.